welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-54. In our last episode, the party returned from the farmhouse and enjoyed a gentler ride through the countryside. Along the way, they observed what appeared to be an owlbear wandering by the creek. Half of the group was unaware of the dangerous creature's existence, while Lady Irena, Cave Silvertongue, and Fargus Stoutheart all warned them of the creature's nasty demeanor. Upon returning to Colby, they were lauded as heroes and given a handsome reward by the Magistrate. Benson the Guard was elevated to Captain of the Watch for his bravery, and Fargus spotted Winnie waiting for him in the crowd. We meet back up with the ranger as he moves through the crowd of well-wishers to speak with the comely young barmaid. Thank you. Uh, th yeah, thank you. Yeah, we were happy to help. Yes, thank you. Greeted Fargus to the throng of grateful citizens before he finally reached the pretty barmaid, waiting for him, smiling. He stammered a greeting to her, but asked to step out of the streets as the citizens kept coming up thanking him. Taking him by the hand, Winnie raced to the side of the tavern behind some stacked barrels and leaned up against the wall. Yes, my brave man, what can I do for you? she inquired. Her tone made Fargus blush and caused him to stutter until Winnie burst out laughing. Smacking him playfully in the chest, she told him to spit it out. Fargus reached into his belt pouch and withdrew the promise stone in the shape of a heart. I... I don't think... he stammered before blurting out... I don't think I should have this from you, as he placed it in her hand. Shrugging her shoulders, she took the stone and tossed it to the side before planting a big kiss on the big man. Okay, what makes you think I want the rock, she responded. Dazed and confused, Fargus looked into her eyes, then back over to where the stone was thrown. But didn't you give me that promised stone? When he pulled back and looked puzzled. Promise stone? Me? Then burst into laughter, doubling over. Fargus stepped back and was a bit incensed that Wendy was treating him this way. Seeing the look on the ranger's face only made the barmaid laugh harder. After several minutes, with Fargus growing upset, Winnie caught her breath. Smashing him into the chest again, she explained it to him. That rock isn't a promise stone, you dolt. You found that thing while we were dancing in the street and proclaimed that it was my heart and you would keep it forever. Again she doubled over in laughter, causing Fargus to look sheepishly at her, which caused tears to flow freely down her face from the humor of the situation. Fargus nodded, realizing that he had just made a fool out of himself and apologized. Winnie stopped laughing and gave the man another large kiss. Look, you big lug, you're fun, you're cute, and I enjoyed our dancing. But there is no way I'm ready to settle down especially with the likes of a famous adventurer. You probably have a woman in every town to go to. Again, the ranger blushed and attempted to fawn disinterest and pointed out that there had been a few here and there, but the pair were interrupted by Winnie's father. The enormous man leaned out the back door and yelled for her to get inside that the customers were waiting. She acknowledged the beckon and patted Fargus on the cheek, telling him he was cute before slipping back inside. Fargus looked around and confirmed no one else had witnessed him acting like a fool and quickly regained his composure. Spotting the heart-shaped rock, he checked again for onlookers before picking it up and slipping it back into his belt pouch. Rubbing his face, he sauntered off back into the street where he caught up to his associates. The group watched the unusual scenario with Benson and shook their heads. I'm starving. Can we get some food? exclaimed Bolger. The others nodded and Karina returned from giving the boy who watched Peeper some coins. Thanking Cabe for the silver coins, he waved it off. That was very nice of you, he replied. Karina also pointed out that she was hungry but needed to tend to Peepers. It appears that he missed me, as she remarked. Then she excused herself from the group as they discussed their options. Lady Irena looked puzzled and was a bit hesitant, which was picked up by the others. 
something wrong? inquired the bard. The mage started, stopped, then restarted to speak. She asked Bulger if he was still leaving town to return to Phoenix, and he replied that the wagon train did not leave until the next morning. She smiled and pointed out that it would allow them the opportunity to enjoy his company a bit more. The group crossed the street and found meal service in the Colby Keg, a tavern that appeared to be clean and free of drunks. As they approached the entrance, Fargus jogged up to them and inquired if they were getting something to eat. Upon hearing that that was the plan, he smiled broadly and looked down at Bulger, saying, I could eat a gnome! The group got a chuckle from the statement, but the sailor began to retell a story about a guy he had met at some docks, but was cut off as they entered their rather classy establishment. Several patrons clapped politely upon their entrance, and again the adventurers had to be pleasant and magnanimous. Once seated, they put in their orders with ale and wine shortly arriving thereafter. While the group waited, Bulger broke the silence and asked if he had broken the news which garnered a few quick nod from the ranger. The others puzzled as to what Bulger was talking about, but Fargus brushed it off as the sailor finished up his first mug. He expounded on the heartthrob that had come with Winnie, the young barmaid, down the road. The cleric, the mage, and the bard all gave looks to the ranger who attempted to play coy. Uh, it's, it, it's nothing, just, uh, <clears throat> harmless flirting, nothing more, nothing to be concerned about. He exhaled deeply and bragged about how it happened to him all the time. Cabe pondered his reaction and sipped some wine before pointing out that Winnie didn't appear to be the settle-down type, which garnered an angry look from the human. Cabe covered his remark with a, you must have a lot of personality, which caused the table to laugh loudly and make the ranger turn beet red. The meal arrived a short time later and the group enjoyed each other's company and talked over the adventures that they had had so far. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.